rotational analog. Torque equals uh, I times alpha. Now I have not, I recognize I have not defined what the moment of inertia is. We will get there. I will make it seem really complicated and then tell you the easy way to do it. One half I omega squared? Yep. Now, one half mv squared was the equation that I wanted you to, to know cold. Yeah. That decades from now, I should be able to ask you what's the formula and you should still know it. Why did I, why that one and not one of the others? Because it's always the same. Yeah, but suddenly I'm saying that there's another formula for kinetic energy. It's not that always the same because it's singular. Pardon? It's not always the same because it's singular. Well, actually it is still the same. The same, just a different format. Okay, so then why and don't you want us to memorize that one? Because this has one half and v squared built into it. So let's actually connect that. Oh, before I continue erasing here, uh, one other thing that we probably should hit is I know that momentum is mass times velocity, angular momentum, and again, non Greek letter. Of course, L for rotational uh, would be I times omega for the vectors. What did you say L was again? Angular momentum. We've talked about conservation of energy, conservation of momentum. There's now, we'll just throw in conservation of angular momentum. So at this point, I've just basically thrown up the a bunch of words. Let's get into some more detail. First, let's connect the energies of why kinetic energy, <coughs> our beloved one half mv squared, is at the heart of one half i omega squared. And in doing so, we will talk about what i is. So imagine we have a door or a beam on an axis. This is my axis of rotation. So for a door, it would be the hinge. And this thing is swinging around. If I want to figure out the kinetic energy of that door, I know I have a formula of one half in, in V squared. What would we choose for speed? Why don't we just use omega? Uh, yeah, have, I have, we this just is my them? formula for this is my formula for kinetic energy. Don't we just use speed without the vector? Yep, the speed of what? Oh, sorry, I wasn't reading that. Thank you, the velocity. Speed of what? I don't think there's really such a thing as speed of angular velocity. All right, let's think about why that's happening here. So why there's potentially a question. If I have an object here that is, and let's say this is two meters long, and the thing goes around in a time of, we'll just say 10 seconds. Okay. An object here on the tip, how far does it travel? In circumference? Which is? Two pi, uh, two pi r. Okay. So the speed of this point right here, 
or what I labeled that point A. The speed of A is the distance over time, which would be 2 pi times the radius divided by the time, which is 0.4 pi meters per second. If I take a point at the halfway point, right here, we'll just label that B. Will it be going faster or slower? What's it say? Linear speed. The same? Good. Let's think about what is the distance it travels. 0.4 pi meters per second. Wait, no, that's the distance it travels. Slower, right? Pardon? Slower? It's traveling slower. So let's right. Let's take the question I was just. Well, does it asked. have any force keeping it going, or is it just released? It's already rotating, and I don't know what's keeping it rotating. That's irrelevant. What is the distance this travels? If B is at the halfway point between the center and A. Is that just pi? R? Pardon? Is that just? Yeah, just be pi r. So, or well, pi, two pi one half r. The, the two thing. pi times one meter over it still takes ten seconds. So I have point two pi meters per second. So the further out I am, the faster I've got to be traveling. Assuming that this beam right here is a rigid body. Rigid body just means that it's not going that it. As it rotates, every aspect on here has the same angular speed, they, but they do have different linear speeds. If we take that a next step, I know that the linear speed is going to be 2 pi times however far I am from the center, divided by the period. If I think about an object traveling in a circle, How many radians does it travel in a circle? How many radians in a circle? Two radians? No. <laughs> Two pi radians. Have we done the uh, what are radians then? Yes. Okay. Technically it's like 57, <coughs> four degrees. So this right here is just the angle for one revolution. So this would be that so as it, something rotates all the way around, this is the angle. This is the period. That's just the angular speed. Which we would have actually talked about already when we did our conversion. The v squared over r is the same as omega squared r. So chapter 6. All right, so I've got this thing rotating around. I know the farther out I am, the faster it is going. So if I'm plugging my formula, one half nv squared in for the door, what do I pick as the speed, since the speed varies depending on where I am on the door? Can we make it easy and be the farthest point? If we make it the farthest point, then that assumes, then if we plug into that formula, we're saying everything is going that fast, but it's not going so do we do the starting point? Well, down here? Yeah. Well, that speed would be zero. But the thing, obviously, it's moving, so it has kinetic energy. So do you do several points? Such as? Like a third of the way, two thirds of the way, and then three thirds of the way. OK, so we could take this approach like that. So let's break that down. I'm going to start out more simply. We'll just take the middle. And we'll get into where you're talking. If I took the middle as, it'll give us a crude estimate. So if I take the speed of this spot right there, plug in the one half fifty squared, I get a crude estimate. Obviously, it's not particularly accurate. So instead of picking that point, suppose I picture this as two objects, and I pick the speed of this and the speed of that. So I pick the middle of each of those. So if I label this as one and two, 
I'd have my kinetic energy would be one half mass of one times the speed of one squared plus one half mass of two, speed of two squared. So that's a slightly better estimate. We can take it the next step, break it into three parts. Wouldn't this be easier if we just put in a, a variable? We're getting there. If I did three parts, then it's just the kinetic energy of this part plus the kinetic energy of that part plus the kinetic energy of that part. This is my total kinetic energy. So K is just the sum of all my individual kinetic energies. One to three in this particular case. Which would, but I can break it up into however many pieces I want. So I'm going to break it up into n pieces. And so this will be the summation i equals 1 to n of 1 half n sub i p sub i squared. So the big sigma in front just means I'm adding it up. So more to what if, if n were equal to 2, this is what I have equal to 3. If then I have a plus 1 half n 3 p to the squared. But this is telling me one half is just a constant. That's every term has a one half next to it, so I can factor that one half out. So that would just be the same as one half times the sum of m i v i squared. If we are dealing with a rigid body, which we are, <clears throat> non-rigid bodies is well beyond the scope of this course. Assume rigid body. In other words, as it turns, all thing, everything has the same angular speed. This would be equal to one half times the sum m i. Times, well, I know V is equal to omega R, so that would be omega R sub I squared. Now, omega does not have a subscript because everything has the exact same value of angular speed. Which is one half M sub I, so omega squared, r sub i squared. Omega is common to every single term, so we can factor out. And I'm left with 1 half omega squared m sub i r sub i squared. And as you can see, this is so much simpler. But we'll get into the simplification in just a moment. Questions up to here. Can you keep the purple on the board? Yeah. It's not that scary. Oh, sorry. All right, how's this simple? Well, this right here. Is the moment of inertia. And again, we're we'll after with this. Okay, so now if I'm dealing with something rotating, k is equal to one half i omega squared, or omega squared, squared i if you wish. How is that simpler? Well, it's simpler because doing this sum of m i, m sub i, r sub i squared has been done for common shapes. Every beginning physics textbook is going to have a table, and I can't remember which page it's on for your court or your book. But if I have a sphere, a solid sphere, rotating about a central axis here, then my moment of inertia is 2 fifths m r squared. That more neatly. Okay. 
where M, big M here is the entire mass, and R is the, the overall radius. If we're dealing with a hollow sphere, I is equal to two thirds M R squared. If we're dealing with a disk, rotating, oh, this is rotating about the central axis here. Rotating a disk, rotating about its central center. I is equal to one half m r squared. Slash cylinder. Since mathematically there is no difference between a disc and a cylinder. Uh, there are two more. Probably going to do one more. Uh, no, two more. Uh, I. Uh, so if I have a very skinny rod rotating about its central axis right here, 112 m l square, where that is Questions up to here. the mass of the entire object. Is that why it's a big M? Yeah. Is this object on a planetary scale? It, or it does it not matter? Does not matter. Okay. Yes, you can find the moment of inertia of the Earth. So at least don't want to make a good approximation for it. does raise a few questions. <clears throat> Suppose an object doesn't rotate about that central axis. I mean, if I'm looking at a door, a door does not rotate about its center of mass here, it rotates about the end point. And can we use that as an approximation for the door? So how would we deal with Let's say some object here rotating about the endpoint. A rod of length L rotating about the end. So we go from a thin beam rotating about its center here. So the axis of symmetry is like this, or the axis of rotation is like this. They're now rotating about the endpoint here. So we have our axis here, and I want to move the axis to here. It is this axis is parallel to that axis. So the way we handled it, it was something called the parallel axis theorem. In 251, I would derive it. I will spare you from that, unless there's a big groundswell to do the derivation. What about that? They, they don't want it, but... I'm interested after class. Parallel axis theorem. If all you're doing is moving the axis of rotation to a point parallel to where the first one was, then the moment of inertia, so if I have some object here, this is the center of mass, and I'm rotating the axis to some point P, moving the axis to some point P, then the moment of inertia about point P is just the moment of inertia about the center of mass 
plus mh squared, where h is that distance right there. H is how far you move it. When did we transfer the uh, vi down at the bottom in purple to wr or omega r? And why? We didn't. Wait, transfer. When did i, I, I equal the sum of all the mr squares? So go to the first two parts of that. Yeah, there. The v changed to, to omega r. Correct. Why? Yes. I know that the relationship between linear speed and angular speed is V equals omega R. Oh, I just didn't get that. Part. Okay. That was it? Probably. Can you keep it? Oh, that's more on this screen. So if I take a rod of length L, and I know the moment of inertia about the central point here, about the center point, is 112 ml squared. And I'm going to shift the axis to the end. So I'm going to shift the axis half of the length. So the moment of inertia about this point P here is going to be 112 ml squared plus the mass times how far I shifted the axis squared. So that's L over 2 squared. So that's 1 12th M, M L squared plus 1 4th M L squared, which is 1 12th plus 1 4th M L squared which is 4 twelfths ml squared, which is 1 third ml squared. Sorry, guys. Some textbooks will have this one in their list of moments of inertia. Some will not, because you can just use parallel axis theorem to get to it. So it doesn't matter like how far you move the axis, so it doesn't just have to be on the ends. It can also be 